Thank you for joining us for 292 Baby Educational Videos, Support for Parents and Caregivers of Infants. I would like you to know that all of the experts featured in our video series have given freely of their time and all are from the Early Childhood Community of Greater Rochester. On behalf of everyone affiliated with the 292 Baby Project, we wish you the very best of luck with your children. 292 Baby is a community collaboration administered by Monroe Community College. If you're wondering if this is a show for you, let me help clarify. This would be perfect for you if you were thinking about becoming pregnant, or you have just become pregnant, or you've been pregnant but you haven't had your first um, visit to the doctor yet. This is a time and information that will be of vital importance to you. And to help us explore all that information, we are thrilled to have with us today Dr. Sean Gillis. And Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And Sean is an OBGYN and, uh, at the University of Rochester Medical Center. Mm -hmm. So this is your whole field. Um, you know, there's so much talk about early childhood and um, right back down to conception and preconception and the importance of all that stuff. And I guess my first question to you would be, is it really all that important in the beginning? It's very important. Um, when you're thinking about becoming pregnant or early on in pregnancy, people don't realize that the, the vast majority of the baby's brain development takes place. Um, in the, the very early beginning of pregnancy, you know, from six to nine weeks, often, as we've talked earlier, before women even know that they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. It's not unusual for someone to be um, well past that then, is it? Like all of a sudden they think, geez, I think I'm pregnant, but they're already past, is this what you're saying? They're already past the first critical stage? Exactly, yeah. Before they even, you know, realize that they could be pregnant, they're, they're beyond the point when a lot of this development has, has mm -hmm. started taking place. So yeah. if you can identify when you might become pregnant or, or catch mm -hmm. when you're very early on in pregnancy, it's certainly going to be better to yeah. start doing some of these things that we're going to talk about during the show. Okay. And why is it so important in the beginning there? I mean, you said that a lot of things happen. Like what? Um, a lot of the, uh, the brain development of the, the fetus, the growing baby, starts early on in that. Mm -hmm in the pregnancy, um, the placenta, which is the whole life support system inside the uterus for the baby, uh, develops very early. A lot of the blood supply and the connections um, that are made start very early. And if you can take care and, and create a good environment early on for the, for the growing baby, then the baby has more of a chance of reaching its full potential mm -hmm. once it's delivered and growing. Uh, knowing that, then there are dangers with not knowing it, isn't there? I mean, like if somebody does not know that they're pregnant until they are pregnant, I'm not until they are pregnant, but let's say two months into their pregnancy, which would probably be normal, wouldn't it? it certainly eight, not unusual, yeah. Like eight weeks. When would a person really begin to say, gee, I think I'm pregnant, where they would actually begin to feel that? Most people often notice, you know, things like nausea or breast tenderness, mm -hmm. just not quite feeling right, usually somewhere around six to eight weeks. So mm -hmm. yeah, it wouldn't be unusual to be into that crucial period or mm -hmm. beyond that crucial period when they would actually yep. figure out, oh, I, I am pregnant. So. Okay. so one message I'm kind of getting from you already is the best thing would be to plan for conception. Absolutely. So, you know, it strikes me that um, um, I'm a gardener, an avid vegetable gardener. And I mentioned on the show a couple times before, but my grandfather got me really interested in gardening. And um, he always said, it's at the very beginning of the plant's life cycle when you can be the most, do the most effective things. And that is you want to stimulate this huge root ball in your plant. He says you can't do it two weeks into it. You have to do it. And I'm thinking of tomatoes, actually. Mm -hmm. I grow a lot of tomatoes. But um, he says, you know, you stimulate it by in, um, influencing the environment. You want the soil loose. You want the right pH. You want the right uh, nutrition and all that in the soil. And that environment stimulates the growth. If I'm hearing you right, it's almost like a similar kind of a system. That's a great analogy, yeah. The, the earlier that you can get the nutrition and, and uh, the right environment mm -hmm. for the growing baby, then the better off that baby's going to, to do. So if my 14-year-old daughter comes to me 10 years from now, married, and she's decided to have a kid, and she says, Dad, what's the, what should I do? What should, if I'm thinking about having a child, if I said to her, um, think about effective gardening <laughs> and follow the principles and grow the baby, like that, right? Because then you'd plan. Right, so, right. Um, because those first stages, I mean, what you're saying is that it's just, it's just critical. It is critical. And for people who are thinking about becoming pregnant, I think that's when you can take care to start, you know, getting your nutrition well controlled so mm -hmm. that you're eating a balanced diet. Um, certainly you can talk to your, your health care provider, whether it's your obstetrician um, or uh, you know, a nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. nurse midwife, whoever that you see for your health care, you mm -hmm. can 
let them know you're thinking about becoming pregnant and there is a lot of information out there mm -hmm. that you know they can assist you with so you don't have to do this by yourself mm -hmm. you know you can tell your daughter that in mm -hmm. 10 years okay. um, there are a lot of people that you can ask but one of the big things that we can do is is getting the nutrition you know ready mm -hmm. um, getting ready to to support a pregnancy is there a difference in what I should know about nutrition if I'm just planning to become pregnant as opposed to now I've just found out I'm pregnant? A little bit of a difference. It's surprising. Most people think that when they're pregnant, oh, I'm eating for two, and they actually go crazy with their, their food intake. Mm -hmm. It's actually only about 300 extra calories a day, which for people oh, who don't count calories, it's about one extra cup of milk. Yeah. So it's not that you need a ton of extra calories. The more important thing is actually just balancing, you know, getting you know, the right number of servings of grains and fruits mm -hmm. and proteins yep. to support, you know, the growing and developing yep. baby. Now, I can't obviously ever be pregnant, <clears throat> but if I were, I have a tendency to, to be honest, I have a tendency to eat junk food, especially if I'm stressed out. I, I, I'm just kind of drawn to it. Pregnancy would be stressful, I think, on me. If I were a mom who is pregnant, I'm feeling stressed, and I'm drawn toward junk food, now I'm talking discipline here. I have to actually change my behavior, don't I? Yeah, yeah. That would be hard for me. It would, and it's hard for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, you, you don't want to go crazy with, with being super strict about it, but yeah. it's certainly a time where you can, you know, not only influence your own health, but the health of your baby. And so if you're reaching for the potato chips, you could, you know, think of some other choices that mm -hmm. you have, you know, a glass of juice or... Mm -hmm glass of water, go for a walk instead, yep. um, and, and certainly if you can pick up some of these good eating habits during pregnancy, it's, it's going to help you not only during pregnancy, but beyond once you're done being pregnant, yep. you know, so your whole future could possibly change. Okay. So from a nutrition point of view, I'm going to eat a balanced diet, well-balanced diet. I don't have to kill myself eating a whole lot. Um, I'm nope. not eating for two or three, you're talking 300 calories. I do count calories, and so I know that that is not much it's at all. It's not a lot, yeah. yeah. It's a half a sandwich probably for, yep. uh, in a whole day you're talking too, right? Exactly, you yeah. Know, so yeah. how about um, uh, vitamins, that kind of thing? Certainly we recommend a prenatal vitamin. Um, it's got the right amount of folic acid, which is the thing that we have found um, helps prevent neural tube defects, which are, mm -hmm. um, you know, babies that are born with holes in their spine mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and that's one thing where the preconception counseling, you know, before you're ever pregnant, mm -hmm. it, the one thing that we would recommend is um, starting a prenatal vitamin even before you ever get pregnant so that you've got that in your system mm -hmm. before you ever get pregnant. And I actually recommend that any woman who is of childbearing years that could possibly get pregnant, just mm -hmm. as your multivitamin, as a daily vitamin, just take a prenatal. Yep. And then if by chance, oh, I'm pregnant, but then yep. you, were, you were on the prenatal vitamins prior yep. to becoming pregnant. Oh, that's good so. advice because if no birth control method is 100%, then anybody who is active sexually could Is be, at risk. Yeah, yeah, is at risk. So yeah. take that vitamin, the prenatal vitamin. Yeah, right? you can and get them over the counter at any any store, any yeah. any um, grocery store, drug store. Probably not any more expensive, I wouldn't think. Nope. But, yeah. They're just the same price so. as your typical multivitamin. Yeah. That's, so. a, that's a great suggestion at no cost that, uh, that anybody could do. Um, other things for nutrition? Um, other than the balanced diet, prenatal vitamin, no, that's, that's key. Okay. Yeah. For folic acid, you talked about the importance of that, and that is in the vitamin. Are there other easy places to get folic acid? You can certainly get them from um, green leafy vegetables, um, kale. I don't know a lot of people who eat kale, mm -hmm. spinach. A lot of people don't like spinach. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy is also a time of strange cravings, so, <laughs> you know, things that you would sometimes get the... Mm -hmm the folic acid from don't really sound too appealing so yep. it's easier sometimes to just go ahead and, and do the prenatal vitamin if you're a big vegetable lover though that's certainly a yep. way to do it and then some of our our breads and grains um, in the stores have been fortified mm -hmm. with folic acid oh, okay. um, that would probably say it right on there too mm -hmm, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. you know when my wife was pregnant I had strange cravings for food <laughs> <laughs> empathy cravings no no I'm kidding um, but she did and uh, so I know that that um, actually for somebody just a strange craving might even be a, a first indicator that they're pregnant exactly yeah um, Okay, so those are some of the things you should do. Now we're talking still, again, preconception and in those very first early weeks, what shouldn't you do? What's dangerous? Certainly, um, you know, drugs, alcohol, tobacco, we know that those things can have effects on pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, I think most people have heard of fetal alcohol syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, 
and the unfortunate thing is, is we can't tell people what you know is the okay amount of alcohol to drink mm -hmm. and so we usually just recommend none we can't say that one drink a week wouldn't be a problem mm -hmm. in some cases it may not in some cases it may so I would say you know if you are drinking certainly you should stop yeah. um, cigarette smoking uh, we know that that has risks um, you can certainly have um, a, a smaller baby small for gestational age mm -hmm. baby um, there are risks to the placenta with cigarette smoking so yeah. certainly cutting down stopping mm -hmm. not not only again affects the pregnancy but if you can stop during pregnancy and then stay mm -hmm. um, abstinent from cigarette smoking then yeah. it's going to affect your whole future so yeah. um, and secondhand smoke is secondhand smoke again we would not recommend um, a lot of uh, exposure to certainly there are so many chemicals in cigarette smoke uh, more than we even can count and uh, it's in it's in secondhand smoke as well so mm -hmm. for all the partners of these pregnant women you know if you're smoking mm -hmm. try to be respectful step outside or you too could maybe cut down and yeah yeah and you know be supportive that way so you're actually if you are a partner of somebody who's pregnant and you are a smoker and you're smoking inside it isn't just yourself but you're actually the mom and the baby as well right so. right okay and drugs a certain specific drugs very bad um certainly cocaine crack those mm -hmm. are are particularly bad again the placenta is at risk um, um, and I think most people know that it's not something that we would recommend in pregnancy it's not exactly safe when you're not pregnant so mm -hmm. things that aren't safe when you're not pregnant are you yeah. know you're affecting now not just yourself but your developing baby yeah. so but it is something that you brought up just a minute ago and that is that if somebody is sexually active then they could be pregnant and so that behavior whether it's smoking or drinking or drugs at any time sure it's could, gonna have an impact and, and because you go weeks without knowing you're pregnant it could it could have that impact yeah. so that's a real problem isn't yeah. it uh, not being aware that you're pregnant and then because um, I'm trying to think and I'm, I am trying to empathize if I were 20 years old I was a cigarette smoker you know and if I were a woman and because cigarettes, I, that was They're tough to quit. I mean, yeah. I was able very to quit addictive. 20 years ago, but um, it was awful to quit that. It was just really hard to do. And I can see a woman who's pregnant, who's smoking, and it's it's a drug addiction, a tough one. It's got to be even worse because you probably feel guilty because I'm sure you know. Yeah. You know, so uh, I, those folks especially, I think, would need support. Or at least I exactly. think I would have needed it. Exactly. In that and and it's out there again. Yeah. You know through your your health care provider your doctor your yeah. nurse nurse practitioner nurse midwife um, just ask for help yeah. you know and the nice thing about it is anytime you quit during pregnancy even if you just start cutting down mm -hmm. um, it's helpful mm -hmm. if you can you know quit in you know at six months eight months it's all going to be a benefit so oh, okay. right. so, so it even like if you're trying even yeah. if you're trying that's yeah. a good thing okay we're going to go to a break here in just okay. a minute but uh, I, just a quick question, because I quit, and what I did was I quit about 500 times, and finally I was able, I didn't quit quitting, so I felt good about that, um, <laughs> but, and I did learn patterns so that I could actually find out my weak times and get past that, but it, it, quitting was stressful. Is the stress of quitting a smoking during pregnancy, is that stress bad? Bad for the baby, you said it would be good anytime. I think that the benefits of quitting smoking far outweigh any stress that okay. that would have. Okay. So under any circumstances, it's your best bet to quit. Yep. Okay. Or try. We're going to be back in just a minute. Okay. We wanna, I want to ask our viewing audience to stay tuned. We're going to have some helpful hints scrolling up your screen. And when we come back, we're talking with uh, Dr. Sean Gillis, and we're talking importance of early pregnancy and the things you need to know so that your baby can reach full potential. With Dr. We'll Sean Gillis, and we're talking about the importance of the very beginnings of life and what you can do to ensure that your baby has can reach full potential and a lot of good information about things to do and things not to do. And this is a call-in talk show, and we have a caller, and so we'd like to deal with our caller first. And so let's go to the caller. Hello. Hello? Hi. Hello, can you hear me, or is my TV too loud? Hello? Hello? Hi. Can you hear me? Um, I'm going to turn you up just a little bit here. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, um, my daughter is now a year old, but um, when I was pregnant with her, I didn't know for sure that I was pregnant until I was like, Five months. But okay. at the time I was smoking and I stopped smoking when she was about when I was about six months pregnant. And you know, I think it it benefited me and her because I haven't smoked since. So I think that if you have the willpower to let yourself, you know, let the smoking go, you can do it. Because it's not it's not an easy thing to do because I was smoking like maybe a pack of cigarettes a day. 
you know so it's not easy to do it but if you if you think about the person that's growing inside you and you think about your health I think you can do it okay so you quit at five months yes. no six months. She was it, six months it's six months okay and she's saying that it was really tough to do but that she did it anyways and that it um, and it sounds like you're really glad you did it yeah I'm very glad because I don't smoke anymore I don't have the urge to smoke anymore I don't even think about smoking at all I mean a lot of my friends like I have a friend now that's pregnant and um, she stopped smoking altogether. And, and I'm like, when you have the baby, don't even go back because she did it before. She stopped smoking when she was pregnant with her first child. Uh -huh. And then she went back to the cigarettes. And I'm like, why would you even go back? You stopped for, what, nine months? <laughs> so yeah. why would you even bother to go back after that? Yeah, so. and, and you know, as a smoker, you probably heard me mention I was. I can, I can understand that, that weakness and that craving. Yeah. Um, but I applaud that you gave that up, and that's exactly what um, um, sounds like the best move that you made. Yeah. Definitely, and, and I think you bring up an important point about your future health and, um, and the impact that quitting during pregnancy has had on that, so good job. Yeah, but if you think about it, when, if you're smoking, if you stop smoking and then you go back to it, what are you, you going to do? Go and smoke outside while your baby's inside crying? It doesn't make any sense. You need to just, if people could just have that you know think about themselves think about your child think about the fact that you have to leave your baby inside to go outside and smoke that makes no sense you could be spending quality time with your child so if people yeah, could just do that people don't go outside to smoke and so that secondhand smoke then affects the baby as well yeah so well nice job and, and listen any advice for somebody trying to quit at that level because you and I both know how difficult that is <laughs> um, what I like I said before think about if, if, if people could just sit down and think, hmm, what is this benefiting me? Is it benefiting me at all? I'm not, I'm not getting any, re, um, anything from smoking, but smoking, you know, you're, you're killing your lungs, you're killing yourself, and you have a child that is going to be growing up to see you smoking. You don't want your, I'm sure you wouldn't want your child to pick up a cigarette and smoke it. So think about what you're doing before you do it, and then you can you can say to yourself because smoking is a mind thing if you don't tell yourself that you're not gonna you're gonna stop you're not gonna stop yeah okay, okay. well great thanks so much for the encouraging words and congratulations on a good move okay um, nice to hear that somebody was able to to get past that yeah, and, and yeah, uh, that's tough you know we were talking just before the break too about the things that you don't want to you don't want to do smoking being one of them so toxic both for the person mm -hmm. and for the baby um, and we talked drugs. Anything else? You, you mentioned cocaine. Um, um, <clears throat> sorry. The one thing that I did want to bring up, too, was heroin, which is particularly harmful during pregnancy because you end up with an addicted baby who mm -hmm. ends up having to go through sort of a detox program yeah. after they're born, which can take several weeks to months. Yeah. So, so now, that would be you know, something to, to work toward getting off. A lot of the things like the drinking and the smoking and drugs, and I'm assuming heroin, too, if that's done in those very first weeks, it can have lifelong effects then on the baby, can it? Certainly we know about, um, about alcohol and, and tobacco use. Mm -hmm. It's not as clear with the, um, the other drugs, but we know, you know the risks during the pregnancy are certainly there. Yeah, okay. How about medications? Ah, good question. Um, I get a lot of phone calls about medications, mm -hmm. and I think that it's probably best to assume you know, that you don't really want to be taking anything. There are a few things that are considered safe in pregnancy like Tylenol, um, cough drops are fine. A lot mm -hmm. of women get a cold or two during pregnancy so mm -hmm. you know they need to know how to deal with that. We try to avoid you know decongestants and things like that until you know you're more like four or five months along mm -hmm. and, and after that point it's fine. Sudafed, mm -hmm. you know sort of cough suppressant kind of things, those are fine after that. But any questions at all certainly call your doctor. Mm -hmm. um, herbal supplements we try to dissuade people from taking only because they're not regulated we're not entirely sure what's in them mm -hmm. and uh, not entirely sure the effects on the pregnancy and in fact we know that some of them have harmful effects yeah so okay. I would I would say you know try to stay away from those supplements if mm -hmm. you aren't sure you should be taking them ask your doctor okay another thing too that a parent can do and just to let our audience know again is call 292 baby if you select option two you can talk to a, a nurse from seven in the morning till midnight every day of the week and it's free and and they would 
be able to guide you through what you could and couldn't take or shouldn't take. Certainly. So if there's any question there. Um, it's a service I wish it was around when our kids were little because we didn't know sometimes, like, geez, should we even call the pediatrician? You don't know whether you want to bother them. Right. But this is a way that's kind of a, a middle step where they can call, talk to a nurse, and the nurse might say, yes, call your, because they will tell you if it's a doctor's issue call right away but sometimes it's just some, oh, some general a, information that's a great support so, system yeah I wish it was around when I was because my firstborn anyways this was all new to me and I oh, just didn't yeah. feel real secure about the whole thing you know I think my wife had a lot more confidence because she dealt with children but still it's your own kid and, and it's, it's different just, yeah it is it's another whole level um, during pregnancy issues like abuse something mm. that uh, the OBGYNs would be very concerned about certainly um, the one thing about abuse that I think doesn't get publicized enough is that during pregnancy, if you are in an abuse situation, it's likely to escalate. Um, it's likely to be more more dangerous, more harmful, mm -hmm. um, and your risk of actually dying from abuse is higher in pregnancy than any other time. It's a very stressful time mm -hmm. for you know the the partner, the abusive partner. Um, they feel like they're losing some control and oftentimes that's how it manifests is mm -hmm. more more dangerous situation actually for the patient okay. um, you know you mentioned the stress and if I can go back to the gardening analogy um, I know with my plants in the beginning if they're stressed like too little water or too much water or too little heat or too much heat the stress in the very beginning has lifetime is it the same too like it just stress itself I can I can picture that it might I haven't actually seen data that have mm -hmm. have suggested that one way or the other but I can see I mean it w it would make sense that you know trying to avoid a great deal of stress would be a good thing yeah yeah so um, okay um, how about things that these are just general questions I think um, I can remember thinking should anyone have sexual intercourse during pregnancy you know you're that's another question that that comes up a lot and it's actually very safe it's it's perfectly fine perfectly mm -hmm. normal. Um, without being too graphic oftentimes <laughs> to accommodate the you know the growing stomach different positions may need to be tried but mm -hmm. it's perfectly safe unless uh, the doctor says not to for example if the woman has had bleeding um, if there's some risk of going into preterm labor often we'll have people back off mm -hmm. from that but otherwise it's totally fine okay. just a matter of comfort yeah how about exercise again um, exercise is fine oftentimes if it's something that the woman has been doing prior to pregnancy we say go ahead and continue mm -hmm. um, because they're obviously very comfortable with it even you know running mm -hmm. some light weight lifting not not heavy free weights but um, certainly light weight lifting resistance um, one thing that I know we were talking about a little bit earlier is that how much exercise we do often have people cut back a little bit mm -hmm. not to go to their max we like to have maximum heart rate around 140 mm -hmm. which when you're pregnant it actually gets there faster oh, okay. so you yeah. have to take your pulse yep. um, really frequently during your exercise mm -hmm. um, you're probably going to want to cut back on on running you know mm -hmm. two or three miles a day instead of the marathons that people yep. are used to um, just to avoid overheating yep. and um, certainly adequate hydration um, is big yep. drinking lots of water and mm -hmm. trying not to exercise when it's the hottest time of the day. Yeah. Okay. But otherwise, yeah, it's perfectly safe as long as it's something that you're comfortable with. Yeah. Because I could see exercise being part of someone's plan for reducing stress and just an overall well-being. Yeah. You know, at least in my life it is. And uh, um, if I didn't have that, but you're saying that there's an acceptable level. Exactly. And incorporate it. And, yeah. Uh, and people that are fit actually have easier deliveries. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Something, uh, a safety issue, you know? You've got a baby here, seat belts in the car. It strikes me that that would crush the baby. Is that, uh, and, and I think a lot of people visualize that that would happen, mm -hmm. and they, they're concerned that they maybe wouldn't even want to wear the seatbelt during pregnancy. But we actually recommend it during pregnancy, probably more important than any other time. Mm -hmm. um, seatbelts are always important. I don't mean to imply that they're not. But um, the health of the baby is directly influenced by the health of the mother. So mm -hmm. if the mother is tossed from the car, and her injuries are much more severe than if she would have been mm -hmm. seat belted, then the risks to the baby are much greater. Yeah. So what you want to do is make sure that the seat belt fits snugly, that it's not got a lot of clothing under it, you know, mm -hmm. and try to kind of go around your belly, make sure that the lap belt kind of comes under it and is against your hips, mm -hmm. um, and then that the shoulder one kind of goes over your shoulder and down to the side. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so but you, you don't have that strap right in the middle exactly. of the belly Exactly. Tuck it under yep. your belly. Yeah, okay. You know, that way, if you've got the stress, it really wouldn't... Yeah. Crush the the baby. baby's pretty um, supported in there with the amniotic fluid and, mm -hmm. you know, mom's stomach and the mm -hmm. uterus are all 
uh, you know, yeah. in the way as well. So, yeah. so the baby actually makes out pretty well in yeah. most cases. Okay. Nature knows what it's doing, right, yeah. <laughs> in this design. Um, maybe the last topic that we'll have time for, I guess, is the, the support. Is it important for the, for, the, for the mom to have a support system? Absolutely. And, and just like we were talking earlier with the cigarette smoking, mm -hmm. um, a partner who's supportive in trying to quit or helping the patient or, you know, the new mother, mm -hmm. mother-to-be, try to quit um, is going to have a lot of benefits. It's going to help her, mm -hmm. you know, not feel guilty about it and um, and certainly family and friends that can offer support in in any way you know yeah. instead of saying you know oh hey let's go out and get a drink you know maybe yep. hey let's stay in and have some iced tea or something you know yeah just making helping the the new mom make some better choices yeah because it's hard you know and and I think that you know it's it's hard to do by yourself so yeah. certainly friends and family and and partners play a significant role yeah yeah. You know, what might not be a bad way for someone to show support is to watch this show, because we're archiving all our shows, is to watch this show and go through everything and then help plan nutrition and safety and all that stuff with the person, you know, because Absolutely. it would bring it up and they could talk it through. Because it strikes me that one of the messages I'm getting from you is that planning is the most important thing, or it really helps. helps. We've got just about a minute left, and okay. I'm just wondering if you have uh, any final thoughts. Um, it's been wonderful information. I think, just like you said, that planning is is key and if you are thinking about becoming pregnant or you know you're pregnant seek some some care mm -hmm. ask lots of questions um, we've got lots of ways to to help um, just give that baby the best possible start mm -hmm. so okay great well Sean thank you so much for joining us thank this you has for been wonderful me. information and one thing that's popping out in my mind is the idea that you can get prenatal vitamins and take those just like you would normally whether you're planning to become pregnant or not exactly. if, you're, if you're sexually active just because, in case just in case so thanks again thank you and we want to thank you all for uh, joining us today babies brains don't grow by themselves but when you sing to your baby Talk to your baby and play with your baby. Her brain cells learn to grow. So sing to your baby. Talk to your baby. Play with your baby. Two Nine Two Baby is a community collaboration of many community partners, and it's administered by Monroe Community College. What you're seeing is a list of those who are supporting or have supported the efforts of 292 Baby to reach out to help support parents and caregivers of infants. We would like to thank each of these contributors for their own unique contribution to this effort.